بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته and welcome to lessons in fiqh we started last time uh, with the manners related to answering the call of nature and uh, we have hadith number 79 i presume uh, who will be reading it Zaki, go ahead, please. Narrated by Anas radiallahu anhu, whenever Allah's Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to the khala to answer the call of nature, I and a small boy used to carry a letter container full of water and a spear-headed stick, and the, the meaning is the Prophet would clean his private parts with the water. Okay, first of all, you have to pay attention and I know you all do this but it's just a reminder now whenever you hear the name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you should pray on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by saying peace and praise of Allah be upon him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this is not a thing that one gets tired of because the more you say it the, the closer you are to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the Day of Judgment and he told us that those who do not pray on him whenever his name is mentioned are one of the stingiest of all because a, 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 a generous person pays money and also a generous person always prays on the Prophet or uh, uh, gives his salute to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now, <clears throat> this hadith, this chapter that deals with the manners of answering the call of nature, we spoke about not allowing things that has the name of Allah to be entered into uh, uh, the lavatories or to be entered into the bathrooms while answering the call of nature. And we gave the justification uh, towards that. We also talked about the supplication one says when he enters the lavatories. Mustafa, uh, which foot should I uh, put forward whenever I enter uh, a bathroom? The left foot. Okay, so now because I'm doing something that is not honorable, I am relieving myself. Whenever I enter a bathroom, I use my left foot while entering. And whenever I'm exiting, I use my right foot. So this is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, the hadith tells us that uh, 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 Ibn Abbas, or it tells us that Anas Ibn Malik, the servant of the Prophet Sallallahu whenever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to answer the call of nature, Anas and a young boy, a, another servant, would accompany the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, assist him, in carrying this leather container that contained water and a short or small spearheaded stick. It's called anaza. And what is the use of anaza? The, the Prophet used to carry it most of the time, either to uh, 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 um, have the assistant of it, such as uh, using it as a cane, or to use it in anything else. It, it becomes handy. Whenever you want to pray, for example, you uh, erect it in front of you so that nobody passes between you. It becomes the border for your prayer area. And for many other reasons, it can be used while answering the call of nature to hang your thobe, to hang a, a piece of cloth on it so it becomes as a visor. It, it protects you from people gazing at you. So it has many uses. Uh, and now the water or the leather container contains water and why does the Prophet وسلم, when answering the call of nature takes water with him Islamically we when we urinate or defecate we have to clean the path this najasa came out of this impurity came out of which is either uh, which is your private parts so whenever you urinate or defecate, 
after finishing, you have to clean the area. So you can clean it through three ways. One, using a hard substance, such as stones. <clears throat> and 15 centuries ago, they didn't have toilet papers. So they only had stones. And this is the first means or way to, cl to clean oneself after answering the call of nature. The second type of form is by washing it with water. And the third type of form is doing both. That is, using a hard substance, a stone or, or toilet paper, then following it with washing it with water. And in this hadith, it states that the Prophet Sallallahu whenever answering the call of nature, used to wash his private parts with water. This is called istinja. Using liquid is called istinja. Using hard substances such as stones, uh, uh, toilet papers, wood, whatever, it is called istijmar. And this is not a sunnah in the sense that you can pick it or leave it. It is a must because as we've mentioned before, in, able for, uh, in order for you to pray, you have to be tahir. And tahir is, is divided into two main groups. Does anybody remember these groups? Two types, tahara. The definition of tahara tells, it, tells us uh, the meaning. Uh, Fadi? A major tahara and a minor tahara. No, this is one of the uh, divisions of one of the parts. Uh, Mustafa? Um, spiritual tahara and okay. physical tahara. Again, this is one part. Now, <clears throat> pay attention to this. What does tahara mean? Islamically, according to the Sharia law, tahara means removing the filth and lifting the state of hadath. So it, it, it goes both ways. Removing the impurities, the filth, that is you have to clean the area you're praying on, you have to clean your clothing, you have to clean your body. If any stain of impurities were to be on any of the three mentioned earlier, then your prayer is invalid. You have to pray it again. If the area you're praying on has an impurity, najasa, if there's a stain of urine on my clothing, it's a najasa. If I have it on my body, it's a najasa. This is lifting the impurities or the filth, uh, uh, removing the impurities and the filth. And the other part is uh, lifting the state of hadath, whether it is major impurity or uh, uh, minor impurity. So going back, if you answer the call of nature, it is a must for you to clean your private parts, whether by washing it, sprinkling it with water, or with a, by wiping uh, the private parts with using something that is not uh, 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 not uh, sm with a smooth surface. So, that can we use, for example, glass? It, we cannot use glass because nothing sticks to it. So it has it doesn't do any any good for us. It has to have a hard and rough surface so that it would clean, such as stones, toilet paper, clothing, wood, whatever. So this hadith tells us that it is a must. And why is it a must? Because if you don't do this, then your underwear, your body, would still be filthy and impure. And then this means that subsequently your prayer is not accepted. Uh, the following hadith. Narrated by Al Mughira bin Shaba, may Allah be pleased with him, Allah's Messenger وسلم, told me, Take the leather water container. He then went forward till he disappeared from me and then relieved himself. Again, this hadith follows the same sequence of the manners for answering the call of nature. Al Mughira bin Shaba was one of the companions, and the Prophet وسلم, requested that he brings him a water container, a leather water container. So he did so, 
and he knew that the Prophet ﷺ wanted to answer the call of nature. Remember that they did not have bathrooms or toilets. They had to go as far as possible from the, 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 the people. And this is exactly what the Prophet ﷺ did. He went as far as possible. He disappeared. Mughira could not see him. Why? Because this, this is one of the manners of answering the call of nature. That you do not do that in the presence of people. So that they would not find any bad smell and they would not hear any noise coming out of you, any sound coming out of you. And it shows you how polite the Prophet ﷺ was and how shy he was from showing these things to others. And, and this is how we should be. And maybe the word shy is not the proper uh, term to use because shyness is uh, usually associated with weakness. More likely, it, it, it's polite. You know, al-haya is something that prevents you from doing things that are wrong or mis discredit you. And the Prophet ﷺ definitely was among the best in such uh, 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 good behavior and manner. And that is why he used to go away, far away, until he disappeared. Now, if you compare this to how the people are uh, answering the call of nature nowadays, you'd find strange things happening. <laughs> For example, if you go to a public toilet, there are these, uh, I don't know what they call them, uh, call them stools or whatever, <clears throat> where they urinate in while standing up. And everybody is doing it, and they're looking at each other, uh, each other and saying, well, Hi, how are you doing? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's nice. This is awful. You know, what, what are they doing? To do this? He's a man and I'm a man. So what, what, what's wrong in that? This is unacceptable at all. One should preserve and keep his awra. And what is the meaning of awra? There isn't any uh, English word that describes or translates to awra, but it is the part of your body that no one is allowed to see except your wife. And for women, it's the same thing. It's the part of the body that no one is supposed to see except her relatives, not only the husband, but also her uh, uh, blood relatives, such as the brothers and so on. And the, 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 the issue of awra is a, a big one. And, and this is not definitely the time to go uh, into it. Uh, nevertheless, we have a short break, so stay tuned. You live on Ask Another Questions, please. I would like uh, Sheikh to um, comment on that and to give me uh, how can I answer. Listening to the adhan and repeating after the mu'addin is similarly a highly recommended act of worship. So how does he reply to her? This is what we call it an invalid analogy. Uh, because simply there is no comparison between answering four out of five in any exam and skipping a faridah such as or a pillar such as a prayer. No one is exempt from praying except women during the menses. Sister Um Saud also wants to know if a woman has to cover her feet when she's praying. The four fuqaha, Abu Hanifa, or Malik, or Shafi'i, or Ahmed, the, the greatest representatives of the fiqh schools, are in agreement. It is haram. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back. Before the break, we were talking about awra, and we said that awra is the part of the body that is not supposed to be seen except by your wife, and the part of the body of the woman that is not supposed to be seen except by her br br uh, blood relatives, such as aunt. Aunt, okay, well, th she's a female, I'm talking about males. Brothers. Brothers, fathers, uh, uh, sons, and so on. <coughs> Uncles, and so on. 
unfortunately, this <clears throat> has changed a lot in, in uh, nowadays. If you go to the beaches, if you go to uh, 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 the clubs, you would find that nudity is prevailing in these places. Islam tells us you should preserve your awrah. You should contain it. You should not share it with others. It's not something that you uh, uh, show off with. <clears throat> Remember that Adam and Eve descended from heavens, from Jannah, when their awrah was exposed because of eating from the uh, uh, forbidden fruit. And this is something that's common between those primitive people in the jungles of Africa and those primitive people in the West and East. They all share nudity. So if you go to the jungles of Africa, you see them nude, but they're primitive. Yet if you go to nightclubs, if you go to strip bars, don't go to that. And if you go to uh, places in the West, you find them also nude. If you watch their fashion shows, and they try to show as much flesh as possible. And it tells you that the only one prevailing and the only one controlling this issue is shaitan, Satan, Iblis. He is, Luther, he is the one controlling them and trying to uh, uh, get them off the right and correct path. Muslims are completely opposite to this. They are discreet. They are modest and honest. And they try to preserve themselves and to keep their awrah and not to show it to every, everybody or to anyone else. And that is why you have a very high rate of hom homosexuality in the West and East. You have a very high rate of homosexuality because they show their flesh. And accordingly, their sexual desire transforms from here to there and it, 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 it reaches stages that cannot be controlled. Islam does not allow this to happen. Unfortunately, we see this also in sports clubs, in shower rooms. It's, it's very normal in, in, in a lot of countries to find men showering together, naked, nude, completely. And this is completely out of the question. It's against Islam. And those who do this are considered to be weak Muslims and are considered to be not believers of Allah and the Day of Judgment. Women also are not allowed to expose themselves in front of other women. So women going to swimming pools or going to the beaches wearing bikinis or swimming suits, just because there are only women around her, this is not allowed in Islam. She should cover herself. She wants to swim in a swimming pool, in a club or whatever. She's allowed to do this. She's allowed to do whatever she wants, providing no males are watching, providing that she's not exposing any of her awra. I, I think that this gives us a, a, a glimpse of how a Muslim should behave and how Islam wants us to keep our integrity and modesty preserved at all times. Uh, the following hadith narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu an Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said safeguard yourselves from the two matters that can cause cursing that befalls the one who relieves himself on the people's pathways and under their places of shade reported by Muslim again this is one of the manners that one should follow when urinating or defecating when you're answering the call of nature do not do this in anywhere. Do it in specific places. Places that are far away from the passage way of people and that are far away from their shade. And where, are, where do we usually find shades? Under trees. Under trees, next to buildings. So the Prophet says, safeguard yourself, Allahumma salli wa sallam alayhi from the two things that cause cursing. First of all, is cursing a preferred thing in Islam? No. Is it a preferred no. thing in Islam? No. The Prophet told us that a believer 
does not curse and does not backbite and, and uh, ليس المؤمن باللعان ولا بالطعان uh, the person that talks about others <coughs> this is a believer if you compare this to our uh, current situation you would find that the only thing we're good at doing is cursing and swearing this is not a believer's way of living now nevertheless the prophet says alayhi safeguard yourself from being cursed and how do i safeguard myself from being cursed he says that if you answer the call of nature in the passageway of people or in their shades under the uh, a tree if a person is passing by and steps on your dropping on your uh, 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 things that you've done you know 101 or 1201 whatever you've done the first thing that would rise to his mind is god damn it whoever did this so it will go directly to you and you deserve it because you've made his uh, uh, way f filthy and dirty you had the whole world for you to uh, answer the call of nature there you only chose the passageway of people you only chose the the, the sh their shades especially in summer if you're traveling or if you're moving from one place to the other and it's hot and you would like to sit and rest for about 10 minutes and you pick up a tree pick a tree and go to the shade to sit and you find this guy has defecated in you curse that who did this and this tells us that Islam tells you that you should keep cleanliness all the time and it tells you to keep away from the things that harm people that may cause them to be disgusted or uh, uh, that may filth their clothing or their bodies Fadi I have a question sir when the Prophet took the water con no, containing leather sallam, and the spear he did so he didn't and he, he went away from the boy or from the co other companion he was not hiding behind a tree or like how how uh, wasn't he be seen like well if you if can go underneath a tree we don't know if he did it be behind the tree or not he, we know that he disappeared so if he disappeared this means that he went really far until they could not see him and you can hide you can hide behind a rock behind a hill behind uh, a place uh, that is not related to is not necessarily a tree and one reason for not allowing us to uh, 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 answer the call of nature under trees because sometimes trees are fruitful and you get fruits falling from a tree to the ground and if it falls on the wrong place nobody's gonna use it and then it's gonna be a waste of something that is halal and for us uh, to use does this answer your question okay we go on to uh, the following hadith narrated by Jabir may God be pleased with him Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said when two people go together to relieve themselves each one of them should conceal himself from the other and do not talk for Allah detests that now this hadith is not a strong hadith it's a weak hadith yet the meaning is correct in the sense that one of the manners of answering the call of nature is that you do not speak now you are in this position for a very short period of time you want to relieve yourself and move on but if you go on and start chatting to the one next to you this is not respectful especially if he's next to you in, in, in these public uh, toilets nowadays and he listens to what you do and you listen to what he does and you start talking about finance about uh, politics and so on though it's the right place to talk about politics because politics thinks usually but nevertheless it's not permissible it's it's not honorable for you to talk while answering the call of nature except in case that it's a necessity such as if you are answering the call of nature and one way or the other you see a child is about to fall from a, a building or 
a child is about to, f someone, a blind man is about to fall into a well or harm would, may, may happen to him, then you have to talk. You have to, it's, it's okay to speak. But when you are answering the call of nature and you, the mobile rings and you start communicating and, 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 and sending SMS messages, you are not there to stay. You have to relieve yourself and leave. As we said uh, uh, a couple of programs ago, toilets and bathrooms are occupied by the devils, the jinn. And that is why we supplicate. We say, Bismillah, to protect our aura from uh, them. And we also say, A'udhu Billah min al wal khaba'ith. I seek refuge in Allah Azza wa from the jinn, females and males. So it's not uh, uh, proper for a Muslim to go and sit there and chit chat and, and read books or, or magazines like uh, some people do. And it tells us that you should be discreet. Don't show yourself. Stay away as, as far as possible from the eyes and, and, and hearing the sight and hearing of of people when you are answering the call of nature. One would argue and say, this is natural. And because it's natural, you should conceal yourself. Now, once a, a, a one in the presence of the Prophet والسلام, passed wind and he made a sound. So the other companions laughed and the Prophet والسلام, was very angry with him. He was very angry with them, not with him. What he did, nobody does this intentionally, of course, unless he is a, a, a moron. But normal people don't do it intentionally. So it was a mistake and it popped out. But the companions laughing, the Prophet was very angry with them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, how come one of you, how come you laugh out of something that everyone does? So what's, wh wh where, where, where is the catch? Why are you guys laughing? You shouldn't be laughing. This is something one should conceal and hide from others. If it came to be uh, visible or, or audible, then you should, not, you should ignore it. You should not comment on it so that it would not make uh, uh, your personality down and would not make you uh, humiliate each other by doing this. I'm afraid that this is all the time we have for today's program. And until we meet next time, fi amanillah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh.